Hi, it's me, Jazzy. I'm back with another tech-related video, and today it's a look inside. And we're going to take a look inside this little tailor meter. Now, I picked this up a while ago. I think it was on one of the mailbag videos, and I said we'd take a look inside it and give it a clean up and give it a bit of a test. And it's a lovely little meter and it's in good condition. So let's get it over on the bench so we can take a closer look at this little beauty. So I picked this up a little while ago and it's a Taylor model 127A. That's a very nice little meter. Recommended for horizontal use. So a bit like an Avo, but smaller. So it looks like it'll go up to a thousand volts AC or DC. We've got our other probe connections down here. We've got an adjustment for ohms. We've got a switch between AC and DC volts and resistance. And we've got our function selector here. So here's all our volts ranges, which all seem to click quite nicely got resistance, resistance and current. That's the stop point there, so then you have to go back around to there. Well it's a rather nice little meter. I think what we'll do is we'll take it apart and have a peep inside. While it's apart we can give it a good old clean up, give it a bit of love. I came across this old advert for it online, look at this. 20,000 ohms per volt and adopted by the GPO. This came out, I believe, mid-1960s, and it would have been eight pounds, 10 shillings, and no pence. So you can see all the ranges here for DC current, volts DC, volts AC, three resistance ranges from zero to 20 meg ohms. This was quite the bit of kit in its day. 40 microamps meter with a three and a quarter inch arc. That's pretty fantastic, love that. Now the other great thing is this meter came with some of its original paperwork. So look, we've got the original instruction manual here. This is fantastic. I always love getting the original bits and bobs with these things. There it is. You've got your general description on there. Explains the scales there. So you've got the outer black scale, which is calibrated in ohms, used for the resistance ranges, obviously. You've got a linear scale with 50 divisions, which is here. is used for all volt and current readings, with the exception of 10 volts AC. The third coloured red is used for 10 volts AC only. And then the fourth is calibrated, minus 10 to plus 15 dBs, and used for power output measurements. Oh wow, look, it's got all the specifications in here. That's cool. And look, we've even got a circuit in here. Selenium rectifier is used to supply the meter with direct current. So we can have a look for that when we open it up in a minute. It's even got a parts list here. Look, all the resistors. Oh, it's got everything in here. Oh, fantastic. You've even got a layout of the components. Wow, you don't get that these days, do you? So here's the batteries that we need. We only need the batteries for the resistance ranges and it needs an EverReady U10 and a B121. So not exactly common battery sizes these days. I think I might actually have a B121. I'm, I'm not sure about a U10. I'll have to have a look at that. I had some additional paperwork here that came with the meter, which is wonderful. I love to see the history of something like this. Corrections for scale. Oh, so this is just updates on the information that's in the user manual. Taylor Electrical Instruments Limited, 22nd of June, 1965. That's pretty cool, isn't it? It's be the original purchase invoice, which was 21st of the 5th, 65. Wow, that's very cool. Tells you a little bit about the history of our little Taylor meter. So I think we should take a peep inside this little beauty. So this looks like the battery compartment. So I had better make sure that it's not got any random old batteries that have leaked. Not too sure what I will find. We have nothing in here. So we need two different size batteries. Okay, let's see what we've got inside. I'm always intrigued opening up something like this. 
so different to opening up a modern multimeter. Right, let's see what we've got. Just lift that off very carefully. Oh yeah, you can see the wiring there going to our two batteries there. Oh, look at that switch. Oh wow, they don't make them like that anymore, do they? Fantastic. All right. Oh, it looks nice and clean in here, doesn't it? So let's have a closer look at what we've got then. So it looks like we've got some high voltage resistors there. That'll be for the 1000 volt range. It'll be one for DC, one for AC. So we've got 15 meg ohms for the DC 1000 volt range and 750K for the 1000 volt AC range. So there's a close up of the high voltage resistor. That'll be to divide down the 1000 volts along with the rest of the range resistors on the switch. And the one on the other side does the AC. You typically only see this type of high voltage resistor in old vintage analog meters, like AVOs, the sort of thing you'd see in an AVO. It's the back of the movement there. So around the edge of the switch, you can see the range resistors. And we've got a wire wound resistor here on a card. Look at that. Just zoom in a bit so we can see that component. What is that? Center cell PA slash 1D. That's the selenium rectifier. So you can just see under the rectifier there with the red and blue wires coming out, that's the slide switch and that's what will switch the rectifier in and out. That switches between AC and DC ranges. Yeah, you can see that wire wound resistor there. Look at that, that's fantastic. And all the range resistors, look, most of them are 1% and very nice solder joints. Look at the work in here, very nice. Yeah, these are mostly 1% resistors. So this was very well built. Oh, there's the potentiometer. That's for adjusting the ohms range. And that switch down there. What is that? Aerial pressings made in England. All made in England. Look at that. That's fantastic seeing such quality components in here. Yeah, you can really see the selenium rectifier there really clearly. It all looks pretty nice and clean in there, doesn't it? So there you go, really nicely put together meter with some quality components in there. Really nice workmanship, love to see that. Let's pop this back together. All looks good inside. So I'm going to give it a bit of a clean up and then I'll see if I can find some sort of batteries for this. All right, let's take this off so we can give it a proper clean. According to the instruction manual, I will require a U10 and a B121. Hmm, B121's what you'd use in an AVO, except an AVO would use a D site cell instead of a U10. You can see the similarity. So I need to find a U10 and a B121. Of course, with the Taylor meter, you only need those for the resistance ranges. That's not going to stop us playing with the voltage ranges. So we'll start off with five. Just want to see if this is actually still working. So I'll leave it like that so you can see the power supply as well. But what we'll do, we'll pop it on the 10 volt range, give it five. Bear in mind this meter might not be overly accurate. Oh, okay. And as I say, this is not an accurate meter on this power supply. So if I go up to 10 then, kind of a little bit under, we'll need to go up a range then. So let's go up to 25 volt. Okay, so increase the voltage to 15. So I suspect this is more likely to be out than this. So let's go to 20, 25. It's quite responsive, isn't it? So we need to go up another one. Let's go up to 100 volt range and whack this up to 30 volts and have a look oh that's that's near as damn it isn't it okay so as we're on the 100 volt range all right let's try it with 60 volts then let's change power supplies here we go yeah okay pretty spot on isn't it let's go on 250 volt range and I can give this 120 volts 
DC. Okay, not bad. Let's have a quick play with some current while we're here. So I'm on the 100 milliamp range and I'm going to hit it with 50 milliamps. Right, what have we got? So it says read the 0 to 100 scale and divide by 10. So 50 would be there, so we're not far off. So that's 50 milliamps. So let me take that down to 40 and 30 milliamps, 20, 10. Okay, not bad. Now batteries. So we need to put some batteries in our tailor meter so we can check some resistance. Now, the slight issue with that is these are fairly non-standard sizes. As we've seen in the book, we need an ever-ready U10 or equivalent and an ever-ready B121 or equivalent. Well, neither of those are readily available these days. So of course, back in the day, you could just wander into your local Maplin and pick yourself up one of these BLR 121s. It's an old one. I took it out of an AVO I was working on a long time ago and I just kept it as like a little keepsake because it's cool. You just don't see them. It's, it's kind of a an obsolete battery size now. Here's an original old EverReady B121, which is again long since no good, but it's just I keep them because they're cool. They look really cool. I love the old EverReady batteries. They're awesome. Now, here's something even more cool. Now, I found this guy on eBay and he sells these reproduction ones. Now, this is cool because he's made it the same size as the original B121. So it's compatible. You can use it in your AVO, which is why I bought this to use it in an AVO. It's just very, very cool. And they have, there's two little screws on the bottom there. So you'll see, if we take those out, there's actually replaceable batteries inside this. This is really cool. I'll leave the link in the video description. But I think they do a few different ones. It's not just B121s. I've got a feeling they do different ones for different various obsolete battery types. And you can see what they've done is they've just put button cells inside. Just enough to get the right voltage. How cool is that? And it's just the right size to fit in our little tailor meter. You could say it's tailor made. This is very, very cool and almost indistinguishable from the real thing. Now, as far as the U10 goes, you can order them. They're a bit specialist and they're quite expensive. I have seen a trick on the Vintage Radio Forum about soldering nuts to the end of double-A batteries and things like that. Now I have got plenty of double-A's kicking about. As you can see the double-A is not quite long enough but it is 1.5 volts which is what we need. So what I'm going to try, I'm going to try a little trick. I was sent this spot welder device for review a little while back and it was pretty good fun actually. I had a go at welding up some 18650s welding some nickel plated strips on so I'm thinking I'm gonna try an attempt to spot weld a nickel plated strip on the back of our AA to extend its length so it will fit in our tailor meter. The tailor meter is not a meter that I'm going to use on a regular basis so I don't want to spend a fortune on an expensive battery that I'm probably never going to use again. So I'm going to improvise as I've got this device on hand and it was rather good fun playing with it. Let's have another go with it. I think it's still set to what I had last time. How this is going to react to being um, spot welded, I don't know. Please know I don't recommend this, but I'm going to try it anyway. So what I'm going to attempt to do is to weld a strip on here and then fold it back over itself. So basically like a, a battery extension. Now I'm not certain that this trick is advisable and I would not suggest you copy what I'm doing here. Anything could happen. I've got my safety glasses on. This is not turned up too high. We should be absolutely fine, but just in case. 
Now, as we saw in the video where I reviewed this spot welder, I'm not the greatest at spot welding, but I will have a go at it. And let's get one on that, and then quick tap. There we go, and we'll do another. I've got the shakes today. There we go, see, no dramas. Nice and easy, that. Let's turn that off. Who knew a spot welder would be such a handy thing? Right, so now, we should be good to fit this. So let me just measure my length. Also, which way round does this go in? Ah, plus is that end. Okay. Okay, that's going to work. It's not my finest. It's a little bit of a bodge, but you know, if it works, it works. There you go. All right. We might be okay there, you know. So the meter does kick. That says to me that we should be all right. There we go. So this we only need for the high ohms range. Uh, plus goes there. So let's pop that in. That fits in nicely. So we've got our reproduction B121 and my sort of homemade U10 equivalent. It'll do the job. I love little gadgets like that that just make life easier. But I tell you what, the little spot welder did the trick, didn't it? That's brilliant, that little thing. I think that's gonna come in really handy. Let's do some resistance testing, shall we? It's amazing the fun you can have just testing out something like this. I love these old meters. I just think they're intriguing. They're of a different time. You know, back in the day when this come out, this, this would have been amazing. If you had one of these and you, you had like old radios you were fixing and stuff. Okay, so we've got our adjustment here for the ohms range it's to try and get the needle on the zero. Kicks a little bit. There we go. Roughly on zero. A little bit of parallaxing, but we'll be okay. Let's try it with one ohm. Okay. Two, three, four, five. We could go to 10, 20, yeah, 30, 40, 50 ohms. That's not bad, is it? Let's try it with 100, yeah. Not really a problem, is it? We can go higher. Let's go to the 100 ohms range. Let's go to the other resistance box. This will go up to 10 megs. So immediately we're off the scale. So what we can do is we go to our 10,000 ohms range. So the high ohms range, and this is why you need the B121 battery because it's 15 volts, whereas the U10 equivalent that I put in here is only 1.5 volts. So we'll go to the 10,000 ohms range. All right, we've got to make sure we zero this properly. There we go. It's a little bit twitchy. So if we go for one meg, there we go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we've pretty much maxed that out. Our little Taylor 127A is actually fully working. These were really cool back in the day. I think they're still pretty cool now. The little Taylor 127A, and it seems to be perfectly functional. It's a really charming little meter. I love these little vintage meters, and it was really cool testing this one out. And we had great fun with some unusual batteries too. Sometimes I would think it's just nice just to pick something off the shelf and have a look at it in a bit more detail. I've got a good collection of these little meters which will keep us going for a little while yet. Just shows how well built they were back in the day. That one seems to be working perfectly well. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video, taking a look at this little Taylor meter. As always, massive thanks to everyone for watching, sharing, liking, and subscribing. And big thanks to all my YouTube and Patreon members. Don't forget, you can also support me on Patreon and buy me a coffee as well, which helps to support the channel and keeps me making more cool videos. I'll be back soon with another tech-related video, but in the meantime, take care, and I'll see you on the next one.